around the council, you will know that Peter's been a member of the Council of Canadians since day one, and was previously the council's executive director. He was a first elected the MP from Burnaby New Westminster constituency in 2004, and he currently serves as the NDP critic for international trade, as well as a bunch of other things that I won't name. And as a trade critic, we were particularly pleased when Peter won the first ever parliamentary hearings on the SPP. And as a consequence of that, we thought it appropriate that he had get the first shot. Peter. Thank you very much. Merci. I'm uh, proud to be uh, a representative of the parliamentary wing of the movement, reporting back to you on what has been happening in Parliament on the SPP. Now, you'll recall, of course, Stephen Harper's uh, campaign slogan in the last campaign. Conservatives standing up for Canada, surely the, the, the most oxymoronic campaign slogan we've had in Canadian history. But promptly, after being elected, they completely repudiated their campaign plan. And they continued with the process of the SPP. Not one single Conservative MP stood up on this repudiation of their campaign plan. Now, that's not surprising to us. We know that many members of the Conservative caucus actually believe that mankind, humankind, walked on Earth with dinosaurs. In other words, they believe that the Flintstones is a documentary. <laughs> But it is important to note that no Conservative has been willing to stand up for Canada despite the Conservative campaign slogan. And what we have seen is, in the words of Jessica Johnson, who wrote an excellent article in this magazine this summer, the July-August uh, July uh, issue, uh, we've seen a seamless transition from what was concocted by the Liberals, where they were the architects and the engineers, and is now being continued seamlessly by the Conservative Party. This is not the first time this has happened in Canadian politics. In fact, we're seeing this regularly. A seamless transition between Conservatives and Liberals. Conservatives, the architects of NAFTA. Liberals, Jean Chrétien, actually implementing the NAFTA agenda. Yeah. Shame. 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 We've seen this with the softwood sellout. David Emerson concocting the softwood sellout as a Liberal. The Liberals decided they waited until after the election to implement it. After the election, he crossed the floor, brought the softwood sellout with him, and it was implemented by the Conservatives. We saw Conservatives and Liberals working together on what I thought was a tragic and sad day in Canadian Parliament when we had the killing of national anti-scab legislation that was reaching the final stage of the vote in Parliament. And I saw Stephen Harper and Stephen Dion rising in the House to kill that fundamentally important legislation that the Labour Movement had worked so hard to get through the House of Commons. And we've seen it with the sellout, 15,000 Canadian businesses over the last 15 years being sold out to foreign interests, largely American, not a single, not a single one refused. We've also seen this with the continuation, as Michael Byers uh, very eloquently put uh, just, uh, just a few minutes ago, We've seen this in the tragic war in Afghanistan. Liberals sent the troops there. The Conservatives continued with the mandate. And I was in the House, again, as an activist. It, it is frustrating to see when Conservatives and Liberals vote together in the House of Commons, the now Deputy Leader of the Liberal Party, and Liberal MP after Liberal MP after Liberal MP voted with the Conservatives to continue the mandate until 2009. So what we're seeing is not atypical. What we're seeing is seamless transition between the Conservatives and Liberals. And we as civil society activists have to take back Ottawa. We have to change this kind of mentality so we have an Ottawa that actually responds to the needs of citizens and responds to our agenda, not the agenda of the Liberals. making progress. I think this week is indicative. We've seen Stephen Harper trying to downplay the SPP. We've seen Stéphane Dion trying to pretend he had nothing to do with the SPP. That somehow his SPP was a gentler, kinder SPP rather than the Conservatives' SPP. Now we know that the bark of a Rottweiler and a wolf may be different, but the bite is exactly the same. And the SPP has continued with the same type of process that we know is fundamentally anti-democratic 
and it is fundamentally detrimental to the interests of Canadians. It's not an issue of prosperity. We've seen since NAFTA was signed and the Canada-US free trade agreement was signed that indeed for most Canadian families, their income has actually declined. Yeah. Most Canadians are poorer now than they were in 1989. And tomorrow night, if I can shamelessly self-promote, the NDP is kicking off its national tour that will be at the Bronson Centre, an anti-SPP tour to stop the SPP. And I will be revealing, because we don't have time today, the latest figures that we managed to get from Statistics Canada's dark bank basement. They gather the stats, but they don't actually put them together, and they don't actually publish them. But the latest stats on what has happened to family income since the Canada-US free trade agreement was signed. So what has the NDP been doing? We've been fighting, along with all of you, in civil society. We have been pressing since day one. Two and a half years ago, the first elected official in Ottawa, the first elected politician to speak out against the SPP wasn't me, it was Jack Layton. And he did it on the eve of that first summit when the SPP was put into place. Since that time, every single NDP MP has been working at the committee level because what we're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. And often what emerges out in committee work is the various aspects of the SPP agenda. So all 29 of us are on guard all the time to ensure that we can push back that agenda. And that's what we're doing in the hubs. We're continuing to press for a halt to the SPP that there has to be full full public consultations and a parliamentary vote before anything else happens yeah. in regards to the SPP. <laughs> and we forced the first parliamentary hearing. Now this is an interesting story, so I'll take a few seconds to tell you about it. For a year, I tried to get the majority of the Trade Committee to actually agree. Had some support from some members, had no support from the Liberals or Conservatives on committee for a year until they decided they wanted to go to Singapore and Saudi Arabia. <laughs> well, sisters and brothers, you actually have to have every member of the committee agree to international travel. So I said very simply, if you want to go to Singapore, then you're going to have to give Canadians SPP hearings. Yeah. <laughs> To that, Gordon Laxer stood at the Trade Committee and started talking about energy security. The Conservatives freaked. Here's an Albert who knows energy issues better than anyone else actually talking about energy issues on camera. They shut down the hearing, and since then, neither Conservatives nor Liberals have agreed to any further hearings, but when Parliament reconvenes in September, we'll be pushing back to continue the hearings so that we continue to have Canadians come forward and expose this agenda to the greater public. So sisters and brothers, continue your good work. Continue to push on the agenda. Get involved in the next federal election. This will be key to the future of our country. It will also be key to the future of establishing a globalization that actually cares about individuals, where we have a globalization of human rights, of labor standards, of social standards, of environmental standards, not a globalization of investor rights above all else. And finally, seven letters I'd like to leave you with. When the next campaign comes, if you want to stop the SPP, and the seven letters are both NDP. Thank you very much.